So big news coming out of UConn's press conference on Friday. It was announced that star guard Jordan Hawkins is dealing with an illness. They say it's a non-COVID illness. However, he missed the media activities, responsibilities there, and also the open practice. Not going to be there. I want to read what Coach had to say, Coach Dan Hurley had to say, and Justin, we're going to get your instant reaction. We're going to talk about this, what it means for Miami, for the big game moving forward here. Coach Dan Hurley. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I think we've got like – three doctors on this trip with us <laughs> so you you uh, you know so you hope that we could navigate it uh we obviously isolated him uh he started not feeling well last night and um you know for him to miss today obviously tells you that he's he's not in a great way but you you obviously you hope that uh you know you hope that we could that we contained it in time we moved him out uh moved his roommate out and obviously you've kept him away from the team so hopefully it just doesn't continue to spread and then hopefully um you know, Jordan's good to go, or at least could be some, you know, some, or give us something. Justin, your reaction to Jordan Hawkins possibly, at the very least, being limited in po possibility for this big game against Miami? Yeah, I mean, it's it's big news for sure. Uh, I was just looking at it. He is shooting over 50% from three in this tournament run that they're having. So not only is he a big factor, but he's hot as can be. So, uh, him being a little under the weather definitely is some big news. I don't think it changes what we have to do, but um, but hey, and they even mentioned it possibly spreading to other team other teammates. So we'll see how it pans out. Um, hopefully he's okay, of course. But uh, for the Canes, that definitely could be could be helpful. Yeah, and just a little background on Jordan Hawkins. He's been somebody that that has essentially been a star for the Huskies this year. 104 three pointers. Uh, that's 14th nationally, led the Big East in three-point makes right there, 38% from three. Um, as you mentioned, he's been really hot in the tournament, kind of a tournament breakout star in a sense. Even though he's had a good year, over 16 points a game, his his stock has really rose, uh, certainly has a chance to be a high draft pick and all these things. A lot of the good things going for Hawkins and the Huskies, at least 20 points in the last two games, the big win over Gonzaga and Arkansas there. He's playing really well. It's a big thing. Again, I think it's going to affect – Connecticut in terms of if even if he does play because he might not be 100% but obviously if he doesn't play that's a big part Justin with with, with a big guy like that um, just at the very least it's a distraction of some sort again they had to move him around they're dealing with the situation will he play will he not play what do you think that matters to a team going into a big game um, obviously not an ideal situation to deal with I think it could affect them I mean they have been uh winning by about 20 points a game they're they're kind of smooth sailing as much as you can say that for the ncaa tournament so i could see this shaking them up a bit again it, it doesn't change the canes still got to do what they need to do and the canes can't get distracted by this either um but definitely affects them i mean they're hot they're in a rhythm and for one of their best players to be sick and possibly getting other players sick definitely uh not something to ignore. So it matters. If Jordan, even if he's able to go, this guy was going to be a big part. And that's Naheem Aline, uh, their bench player at guard. I, regardless if, like I said, if Jordan plays or not, I think he's going to be, Naheem's going to be a big part off the bench. Obviously, I think he's going to get the start if Hawkins is just unable to go at all. Naheem's a guy Miami fans, Miami players, coaches should all be familiar with. A three-year starter at Virginia Tech. Or, and then his first year at UConn this year. Uh, Naheem's playing well for them defensively. He's a good defender, 6'4 guard. But in the last six games, 14 of 29 from the field, 9 of 17 from three. He's playing really well, and he does have tournament experience. In 2021 against Florida, had 28 points, hit a three, two seconds left since the game to overtime. They eventually lose. But Aline's played against Miami. You know, he averaged about nine, eight points a game in those six contests. The Hokies went three and three. What do you think that kind of familiarity, again, regardless of his role, regardless of how many minutes Naheem's going to play, but just a player that is familiar with, with another team um, because there is typically a lot of unfamiliarity when you play these tournament games. Yeah, I think what you said is, uh, is very impressive as far as the stats go. Um, but as far as him being familiar with UM and how we play, I think that helps a lot. Like you mentioned, the unfamiliarity is the key to the NCAA tournament. That's what makes it exciting, but it's all about how you can adjust 
um, for that next game with, with maybe one or two days of prep. So the fact that he has some familiarity can tell his teammates, tell his coaches kind of what to expect, maybe give some insight. It does help. Um, and Hey, uh, we'll see what happens, but um, curious to see how, how, how ready they are and how much he helps in that sense. Joseph, what, what are your thoughts on, again, regardless of the role that, that Naheem's going to play, but just the, the bench guys with Miami, the guards in particular, let's talk about them because they're going to be factors as well with, with Naheem and the other guard. They've got other guys off the bench. UConn has with Joey. You know, they certainly got other guards uh, that, that they play with the DR there as well. Uh, Bensley Joseph off the bench, Harlan Beverly, those are the two guards off the bench. Your thoughts on their play against Naheem, the other bench guards, how important do you think they are in this matchup? They're, they're huge. I mean, they've been huge all year. Um, the minutes, depending on the night, are are up and down, as we saw last game in the tournament against Texas. Didn't really get that many bench minutes uh, from Coach Laranaga, but then you go a couple games back and you saw Anthony Walker had a nice performance off the bench. So I think they've got to be ready. Um, we definitely need them. The rotation has been tight, but the guys are going to get their opportunity. Bensley, Harlan, and uh, Anthony Walker and and kind of what we've seen all year, at least from the outside looking in, it feels like Coach L gives them their opportunity. If they're hot, if they're playing well, their minutes extend. And if not, you know, take them back out, try somebody else. So I think we're going to need uh, some production from the bench, no doubt. And those are the three guys, uh, hopefully, that can bring it to the table. Going back to Jordan Hawkins, one of the things that's really fun in watching him play is just how he comes off ball screens. He's a very good shooter, as I mentioned, but just the way he comes off screens uh, away from the ball, uh, you really got to track him wherever he's at on the court, and I find that to be interesting. Um, I, I think Wuga Poplar, if we're talking about matchups, it seems like he would be the one on him, uh, but with what UConn has, at the, their first three guys, um, they're in the backcourt, they just they have a lot of size. They, Miami can, can match up different ways, but I think Wuga Poplar – Again, if healthy, let's just say if Jordan's able to go, let's say the matchups, and they do kind of rotate different matchups the way coach likes to do it. But if Wuga does guard Jordan, if Jordan's 100% or at least close to it, what are the keys for Wuga, and what do you think of him defensively, if if that is the matchup they go with? If that's the matchup, I think uh, I think that would be a good one. I mean, we've seen him all year he's the most athletic guy on the team um he comes up with steals and loose balls that they just seem to fall in his hands i don't know how he's always in the right place at the right time but not only is is wuga the glue on offense he's a huge piece of the defense and um and i think that's the guy we would want to be fighting through the screens um closing out on the three and try to try to bother this guy a little bit to take him off the the over 50 percent three-point shooting that he's been showing in the tournament. What makes him also difficult with, with their off ball screening stuff. They usually, they can do a couple staggered screens, uh, set up a different guy. Maybe first guy comes through and then they get the ball to him. I, I think Miami is certainly on the scouting report. They cannot relax on shooters with Hawkins. He's got a great form, great shot. If you haven't seen him play yet, people are easily going to see why he's highly regarded, why he has the results that he has. And it's kind of a chance for Jordan to, to really break out even more I, just as we talk about with Wugo, he's getting a lot of uh, hype right now as a young player to watch for the future. Jordan's been producing all season long, but I think people nationally are really starting to understand what kind of player he is. He's an impressive player, certainly a key for UConn in this tournament all season long, and uh, certainly a big key for UConn in this game moving forward. Justin, there's something that, that Coach has mentioned in, in terms of this game, and I do find it interesting and want to get your thoughts on it, but Coach has mentioned, he was asked about players or specific guys, but basically just feels like players in general don't really matter. Teams are going to run what they run. I think he's basically saying it's important to know what the teams are doing, regardless of essentially what numbers or who's out there. What are your thoughts on that? Because again, Jordan, what he, with what he brings to the table, not many players can do that. But do you think that the, the system will change a lot for UConn if he's not out there or how Miami will defend them or things that they'll have to pay attention to? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. I do agree with what Coach is saying. I mean, at this stage of the season, no crazy adjustments are, are going to be made. Teams are sticking to their identity. They're doing what that what got them there. Um, so I do think that that's going to be 
what you really see. However, like you mentioned, a guy that's so dynamic and has such a specific role coming off staggered screens, off the ball screens. Um, I'm not that familiar with UConn's roster, so I don't know if they have another player that would fill that spot and run those same type of actions. But I'd imagine um, as far as those those sort of looks, um, they might run the same sets, but the option or the look might be different not having him in the action. So we will see if Jordan Hawkins is able to go, whether he's able to play, how many minutes, if he's at 100% or close to it. Big game coming up. We'll see how it turns out.